Hey everybody, final thoughts, time for Burn Circle. And let's just jump right in because this is a big game. It's such a big game, I needed help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a ton of stuff here. Yeah, uh, so, uh, I mean, right off the bat, this is, I guess we'd call it like a gamer's game. You know, this is, yeah. this is something that's really heavy. You really gotta like sink your teeth into it. You gotta kind of devote a lot of time to this game. Yeah, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is gonna be something that you put on the table and you're gonna take a while to yes. learn it and to play it and to really get good at it. Yeah, um, but one of the things that I think really helps with that is that it has such a strong theme. I mean, yeah. I was really pulled in to the world of this. You know, you've got, there's a, a bit of story. I don't usually even read the, the intro story at the beginning. It was like, I got hooked because it, it immediately said, welcome to the 404th Legion. And my <laughs> little nerd heart went, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, And so I was like reading and the idea is like, you know, the humans all died and the robots lived in, in a peaceful utopia. And then they brought the humans back because they felt it, it was important to do so. And then the humans immediately went, we hit you um, and subjugated them. And now they're, they're, they're being, you know, oppressed by the humans. So they've got to fight back. It, it's a really cool story. And it leads perfectly into this, uh, this dungeon crawl where you are going up uh, corporate offices. It's a corporate dungeon crawl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and you've got your objectives. And there's a ton of different objectives, ton of different scenarios. Uh, in base game, three different companies, which determines the floor plan. But they do a lot to, to change these up from mission to mission. Yeah. And um, I mean, I agree with you, Shay. Just the theme alone really drew me in. I mean, our characters are access and bit. I mean, all yeah. these like nice little nerdy, you know, tech mm -hmm. things. Uh, we're fighting about the, uh, against the Crucible this turn. But like you said, there's a ton of stuff in the box. So yeah. it's going to change things up game to game. And it really does tie in this whole like dystopian, you know, future of, you know, robots and the humans are trying to, you know, keep them down and they're trying to they're trying to live their happy robot lives, exactly. you know i think that the connection between the theme and the gameplay is really really strong and that's going to be a big draw for a lot of people and i think it should be yeah um now it's also it's not your average dungeon crawl normally you've got a dungeon crawl you go in you fight everybody mm -hmm. you kill everyone and you just loot their bodies that's not happening here. yeah we are not for the most part are not soldiers you occasionally will have a bot that is good at, at, at fighting mm -hmm. the enemies but when we were playing, neither of us were fighters. I'm a pickpocket. Mm -hmm. You're a hacker. Yeah. We to stay away from the guards. Yeah. And I remember, um, you know, before we uh, started uh, this uh, this uh, uh, run through, talking about like, yeah, it's a dungeon call, but it really isn't. It's a heist. Yeah, it's... I mean, this is a great heist. And you know, I'm thinking, you know, a futuristic Ocean's Eleven. You know, <laughs> we're not. We don't want to deal with these guards and stuff. We want to get away from them and do mm -hmm. our thing. We want to direct them away from us exactly. and into their like comedy of errors, where they're <laughs> stumbling over their own feet. Like, Right. passing uh, looking for echoes of yep. us um so yeah that that part is really engaging and i think the idea of like not your average dungeon crawl uh plays in a lot of different aspects of this game like mainly the the titular burn cycle like yes. so what this is is uh it's a way that you it's almost like programming but it's not so restrictive uh at the beginning of the game you will have your command module as sort of an ai helper that is going to load up a few different actions. And they start off, they're basic, and there's one that's not great because uh, it helps the the opponents, or the, the what do you call it, the captain. captain. Um, but you can upgrade it. You can uh, swap out some chips that so you get better things. And basically, every time you're going onto one of these chips, you're taking an action. And maybe if you've uh, put the you know special upgraded chips onto the burn cycle, you can take optimized actions. And those are just a little bit stronger, but it is a really satisfying puzzle of like, what do I place and when do I place it so that I can take these optimized actions? Yeah, and like you said at the top, I mean, this is a gamer's game. So mm -hmm. if you think about a typical dungeon crawl, you know, you have this, you're rolling dice, fighting, getting some loot and stuff, but no, Burn Cycle takes it up a notch. Actually, it takes up a few notches, mm -hmm. you know, with this really cool action selection system. And then on top of that, you have almost like this abstract -y, you know, yeah. puzzle thing of uh, the notes out here that so you're trying to do. Yeah, there's the network, and this is, completely separate from the physical space, you've got the digital space because we're bots. Of course, we're gonna access the network. And this is a nice little mini game where you just have this uh, this grid of, of these nodes and you're, you're going through and you can kind of just coast if you want, but you always have to worry about the the pings that are the, mm -hmm. the enemy uh, little pegs on this node that are, you know, they're trying to find you, they're trying to boot you out of the system. Yeah. But also, if you work it, uh, you can get some really cool benefits, both 
on the network and in uh, the physical space. Yeah, and that, that's one of the cool things. If you ever feel stuck or if you just run out of things to do, I mean, you always have that option there. Yeah. You know, so you, that's really You could pick up the cards that like boost your, yep. uh, your objectives on the network. So there, I do feel like, yeah, like there's always something to do there. Agreed. Um, but uh, as far as the actions go, and like I said, the burn cycle is really cool because it, it allows you to modify it uh, the way that you want to. And uh, then eventually you'll have to reboot the burn cycle, mm -hmm. sort of resets everything. Um, it's one of those things like you you want to put that off as far as you, as long as you can, but you don't want to just take bad actions just to keep it going. Right. So eventually you need to reboot it, but then that uh, increases the threat. If the threat ever gets to the bottom, you lose, but there are plenty of different spots on the threat level. So there's a lot of interconnected systems in there. Right. So a lot of things you have to keep track of. And if you like, you know, uh, this is affecting this, so I need to make sure I put a thing here because if I put a thing here, we won't have to worry about that. Right. If we worry about that, maybe we can handle it, um, especially if I go over there. There's a lot of stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some, I think some people might be a little overwhelmed. Yeah, and, like yeah, and that's uh, that's one thing. You know, again, we're going back and forth, back to the. It's a gamer's game. Yeah. So these things that you know gamers knew, know how to do. I mean, it could be looked at as a little fiddly. You know, mm -hmm. like the fact that, you know, having to check awareness every time you yeah. know, they're moving, that's something that it's not, honestly, it's not intuitive. Um, but, you know, after a couple of games as a gamer, you're yeah. going to figure out, okay, yeah, I'm going to have to, you know, check awareness and stuff. But uh, to new gamers or uh, people who are uh, used to lighter fare, mm -hmm. it may be uh, a bit fiddly because there is a lot of things going on in this game. Definitely. It, it is one of those games where... Like you said, if you put in a lot of uh, effort and like if you play this a few times, it will absolutely become second nature. Yep. But for our first few games, I was looking up things all the time in the rule book. There's, uh, you know, these tiny little uh, reference cards that help you a little bit. Mm. But otherwise, I'm looking through the rule book a lot. And the rule book isn't the best, in my opinion. It's not horrible. It's not the worst rule book I've ever seen, but it can be a little bit difficult to find the information you need, right. even in the rules reference. Um, so, it was, like I said, it's a bit fiddly, and because of that, there's a lot of minutia that you do have to look up from time to time. Again, you put in the work, absolutely. You're going to see second nature, and you'll be able to play this without thinking about it. You'll know how it goes. But the first few games, it's a, you stumble through it a little bit. Now, what I like about that, though, or not about that specifically, but... The way that the game presents itself, when you're choosing your missions, it'll tell you how complex the missions are. Yeah. So first few games absolutely choose the lower complexity missions they're still fun there's still cool things to do and you can focus on making sure you know those systems and then once you have a better grasp of those you can do the more complex missions and then that'll be you know then you can worry about a lot more uh, going on there's right a lot more that the the enemies can do and all that stuff yeah and uh that being said uh there is a tutorial uh for your yes. first playthrough that really gets you through the you know the meat of the game it really uh, helps you understand what's going on and mm -hmm. what actions are available and, and so forth it explains how the burn cycle works it explains everything so that that is one good thing about it um but yeah as far as there's still a ton of stuff that you're gonna have to learn uh, and you know through the trial and error process you will eventually get through all of it yeah, thank you for mentioning the tutorial because I think the tutorial does a great job. Yes. Um, it takes you through the first uh, few like rounds. Um, it completely walks you through it. And if you want to, you can go onto their website and continue the tutorial uh, having it walk you through step by step. Or if you want to just jump in, you can do that, which I, I really like. I, I like it, you know, not overstaying its welcome. But if you want more, you can keep going with it. I think that's really good. Yes. Uh, so they know that it's a complex game. And they, <laughs> they're not shying away from that. Right. It, right. There's a lot here. Um, and uh, some of the things, even though you, you're gonna have to learn uh, a little bit up front, it does pick up really quickly, like the character design. Yes. Um, I love the character design of this. I think that, one, it's just full of flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, each, each character, it really fits its theme, and the theme fits the mechanics of the character. Um, I am reminded a little bit of Too Many Bones, which makes sense, you know, same publisher uh, that, you know, that worked at same uh, um, production. So, uh, of course, there's going to be some similarities, but I actually think, weirdly enough, for the, looking at the rest of this game, <laughs> the character design is much more streamlined than it is in Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones is very expansive, a lot of things you can do, and it's really hard to know what's a good idea. This, there's some things that are unique to your character, there's some things that are general, and uh, it, it feels a little bit more, I don't want to say straightforward, but it's easier to understand okay. what you're working with. Um, so, like, 
I look at my my little little robot girl. Um, she's a pickpocket, and so she's got her innate ability, which allows her to just steal stuff every time you're next to a guard. Yep. Normally, that's not a good thing, but or you don't want to be next to them. Yep. But this gives you incentive to do that. And her special abilities that you can unlock those mostly just add on to that. Yeah. So it all fits. It. I felt the characters were very streamlined, and and um, <clears throat> but on top of that, it gives you interesting choices because the currency that you use to upgrade your abilities is also your health. I love the duality of that. Agreed. It's such an interesting decision. Yeah. Uh, you always have that push and pull. It's like, oh, I want all the cool stuff, but then I don't want to die right away. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> and it's not just your health. It's also the number of dice that you're yeah. rolling when, yeah. when you take your actions. That, I think, is really, really cool. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff in here. Now, like we said, there's also a lot of fiddly stuff. Some, yeah. some Moments were a little frustrating at times. Um, uh, and then uh, there's a lot going on in that game. There's some really cool stuff and some stuff that I'm just not sure about. And for me, that rings really true in the production uh, design. Yes. Because the quality of these components, fantastic. I mean, you know, this is Chip Theory's thing. They make high quality, like these poker chips, plastic stuff, all these neoprene mats are very nice to feel. The, the pegboard kind of situation of these, I think works really well. However, <laughs> there's got to be a but on this. Yes. Because you're printing on neoprene instead of cardboard, you don't have as uh, clean lines mm. on this. And sometimes that's fine. I don't think that is a problem for me on the player board. But we're having some issues with the map. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that like the big map itself is fine. Like yeah. you know, we all love a pl good player map, exactly. right? Or a big uh, board map. That's fine. The player maps are fine. But like like we mentioned, um, you know, before we start playing, like you you look at these and it's just not as sharp or vibrant as it could be. Like you look at the text and the icons and everything else. Uh, it's just not as clear. And uh, again, especially someone like me who has vision issues, you know, if I'm looking across the way here at the board, I can't see that, literally cannot see that. So, so you, you know, things like that. Like, example, yeah, yeah. This, this symbol right here. Mm -hmm. I know that you might think, oh, it's just because I got it on the green screen, it's not coming through. No, this is just really faded. Yeah. Unfortunately, like this is, it's, it's difficult to see what symbol this is. And yes, there are different symbols. And yeah, it, it doesn't come up that you need to look at those symbols that often. So you can figure it out, yeah. but it's not easy at a glance. Right. Um, and that's the thing where I just, I feel like I know neoprene is their thing, but I don't think this is better than cardboard. <laughs> In this situation, I don't think that it's an improvement. Um, at, at, visually, for sure. Also, you know, storing these, it's, it, they don't stack very easily. Yep. That, you know, yeah. I feel like, honestly, if everything else was the same, but they just made the room tiles out of cardboard, I think that would have been better. I 100% agree. Like, you know, keep the player uh, mats. And even the neoprene for these are cool. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just cycle, the, the network, burn cycle yeah. network. Yeah, it's just the, the, the tiles for the rooms yeah. and stuff. It's just a, a bit, and again, we, we get it. It's super high quality, mm. super high premium. But I think in, in this case, uh, from a functionality standpoint, it would work better with just cardboard. Yeah, or one other idea, even if you, if you wanted to keep the, the neoprene, Instead of just having this one tiny little square that shows this, which often, you know, put a thing here, it gets covered up so easily. Mm -hmm. Make this the border around the entire thing. Yes. And put that, you know, symbol all along the border. Yes. Then, you know, you'd be able to do that. I feel like we're nitpicking a little bit on this, but it, yeah. these things are important, especially like you're saying, for if you have vision issues, like that's... Exactly, yeah. comes up. <clears throat> and because, you know... We've said it before, you're going to spend some time with this game. And the more you're going to be looking at this stuff, yeah, it'll it'll eventually ingrain itself. But it, it can be a little frustrating at first when trying to say, oh, is this, a, oh, it's a hidden, you yeah. can hide there. I get that now. I see it now after I've looked at it for like 20 minutes, like, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I don't <clears throat> mind a game that you, that you get a lot more out of the more you put into it. Right. But... I want a game that I will be able to introduce new players to mm. and and not have to say, um, on your third play of this game, you're really going to get it. <laughs> right. You know? So this game, I think to sum it up, like it's a challenge in a lot of really great ways. There's a lot of really interesting challenges um, in terms of your strategy, how you're playing, how you go about uh, fitting the characters that you picked into your, uh, into your missions. But it can also be a bit of a challenge just to get to the table. Yeah. Um, that is not always something I'm looking for, but 
if you if you are really drawn in by this, if you love the theme, if you want a really heavy dungeon crawl that isn't just your normal hack and slash, man, there's some great stuff to find here. Uh, a lot of good stuff, and I, I agree. It's uh, you know, like we said again, if you're willing to put the time in, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Very mm -hmm. immersive. Yeah. Uh, the theme really shines, and you know, get through those first couple of plays, yeah. and you know, bring them to your buddies, and you know, get them uh, into it, and. You know, after a player two, it's it's gonna be a fantastic, fantastic time. Yeah. There is one way, like if you do have an expert player, mm -hmm. you know, someone who has played it a bunch of times, they can always be keeping a track of awareness, yep. making sure you know don't go into the burn cycle. Um, so you can you can ease people into it. Uh, it it just has a bit of a learning curve. Yeah. Um, but but that being its biggest issue, I still think this is a great game. Oh yeah. I, I think there's there's a lot of really good stuff. It's maybe not for everybody, but people who like it, they're gonna love it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Agreed. So, it, it just it takes the dungeon crawl to the next level, literally. Uh, it's, it's so <laughs> good, folks. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so those are our final thoughts for Burn Cycle. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking to the end of the video. We love it when you do that. It feeds the the YouTube algorithms. No, 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 no. We love it. <laughs> uh, so thank you all for watching. We will see you, folks, next time. Bye bye.